At first, at first you have to focus on it. So I think, you know, I, I think you have to know the difference between Reservoir Hill, Druid Hill, Shipley Hill. I mean, you have to know um, what it is, what Baltimore, because people think they've done Baltimore if they fix the harbor. And I love the harbor, don't get me wrong, I think it's great and we should, you know, it's a great uh, tool for economic development. But I think things like, um, you know, bring, working on jobs, getting small businesses, promoting community banks, um, you know, really digging deep into the city and talking to people like yourselves and others that understand and are in Baltimore all the time and know, know the needs and, and try and address those, are, I think are, are in, incredibly important. You know, one of the issues that, um, you know, I thought, what, what would happen if I, the Baltimore Sun did a poll recently that says I wasn't ahead, and what would happen if, for example, I didn't win? This is what actually um, drives me nuts. Like, what would happen to these kids that I'm with? And my, I started inner city lacrosse league here six years ago, and I see these kids every Saturday morning, and I love these kids. They're happy, bright, smiling kids. And what will happen to them if I don't win? They're going to have, we're going to lose another generation, in my view, in Baltimore. I may be hyper, sound hyperbolic about it, but that, that's what, what, what I'm running for. So, um, one of the, so one, well, I mentioned that because I think what I've been able to do in this election has been drive the conversation. In other words, um, we started talking about pre-K expanding from half day to full day six months, you know, last summer. And eventually that became a discussion item. And the question of who said it first and who didn't and how you want to do it became an issue for discussion, but we brought it up. You know, Aaron was there when we started talking about reentry. Nobody talks about that. Um, you know, they talk about crime being bad. And I, as a prosecutor, I, come, I have a lot of ideas about the fact that we have, you know, the seventh most city, violent city in America right here in Baltimore, and we have the fourth most homicides in the country and the ninth most violent state, and there's a lot we should be able to do on that side, but for Baltimore, one of the biggest issues is that 59% of the people coming out of jail, you know, re-entry re people, are coming to Baltimore City. And these are parents, these are children, these are neighbors, people, everybody in Baltimore is affected by this issue. Um, and so the question is, what do we do? Do we still continue what we've been doing and have mass arrests and the people running the Baltimore City Jail and these other issues, or do we actually you know, look at, at how we can take people from being uh, incarcerated at $33,000 a year to becoming taxpayer citizens, like, like Virginia and Oregon and Michigan and other states have done? And you know, since we're spending $1.3 billion on the system, we, I think we, there's a lot of efficiencies and, and places to, to make it so we can bring down our rate from 46% into the 20s. I think it's very, very doable. It just needs attention. So that, I think that would help. I think you know, if you're trying to figure out why people are leaving Baltimore, you know, I, I remember reading you know, Not in My Neighborhood and recently and sort of the history of Baltimore and, how it, and, and the neighborhoods and all that. But if you look at a city that al had almost a million people, now it's down to 630,000, what is it? If you're the person thinking about living here, well, you, you don't, the crime problem, the schools issue, and jobs are all major problems. And so the crime problem seems to me to be the easiest to address. I mean, Philadelphia up the street and D.C. down the street have done a remarkable job of you know, reducing their violent crime, not by playing not with numbers, but for real, um, by actually focusing on it. And I think we can, we can do that piece. The education we've sort of already touched on, I think that's more complicated, um, but, but we have to start really getting serious about it and throw out the old books and try and figure out how to actually do it. Get Freeman Urbowski and others in the room that, know, that understand this issue and, and what, what should we be doing as a state and as an education system to help? But, because people aren't going to move here if they can't send their kids to school here and they think that their kid's going to get mugged on the way home every day. And, and so I think those are some of the issues.